Hey everyone, Scott from Concentric. I'm here with Dr. Madhu Shashanka, and he is one of the co-founders of Concentric and an acknowledged expert in the field of machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. And we're going to chat today about how uh, Madhu has applied his expertise to the problem of unstructured data security. And uh, as a little refresher, if you haven't had a chance to see some of the intro videos for what we do as a company, we're focused on unstructured data and the challenge of providing security for all those files and documents your users create and use on a daily basis. You know, there can be millions of these documents and it's a tough problem to solve because of the sheer volume of those files and the diversity of content we see in those files. So uh, again, I want to just spend a little time today specifically talking about how our solution performs the task of categorization and how it really accomplishes that goal. So, Matthew, if you wouldn't mind, just introduce me a bit to the notion of categorization and artificial intelligence and how it's applied in this area. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. Uh, categorization is a very important use case for document security in, uh, in enterprises because um, not every document needs to be secured the same way. Uh, you know, people today with existing tools, they write policies. Um, and, you know, some documents need to be secured properly more than others. And that depends on what kind of a document that is. So you need to have an inventory of what are all the different kinds of documents you have in your environment. Yeah. So knowing what you have is a really important aspect of being able to secure it, right? Exactly. And that's the use case we are, uh, we are solving by categorizing all these documents into appropriate buckets, into subcategories, into categories, sure. so that you know what you're looking at, uh, that some subcategories may be very sensitive, you may want to secure it really tight, uh, some others may be for public consumption, Got it. and um, that's based on what the documents are talking about, what yeah. the true meaning underlying these documents are. Yeah, so you've, I, you know, we use this term deep learning, and I know it's a cornerstone of what we do, but could you peel the onion back a little bit for us and tell me what deep learning is in terms of some of the technologies we're applying? Absolutely, more than happy to. So the core, actually every, pretty much everything we do in the product uh, is powered by deep learning. Yep. A lot of deep learning and compute. Uh, for folks unfamiliar, deep learning is a field of artificial intelligence. It has uh, revolutionized the field, uh, so to say, in the last few years, especially in the field of natural language processing, which is the field where um, we, we try to analyze uh, textual data, sure. language, human language in English. So why is natural and, language processing so important in this use case? I mean, we, I know we've got lots of documents, but what's, what's kind of going on here that help us uh, utilize this technology? Great question. So we talked about categories and subcategories. Now, they're intuitive for us. Uh, when we look at them, we know there's a tax document, there's a resume, there's a job description. But what's really happening in our own heads is we read the string of words in the document, we understand its meaning and that's how we know what it is. Yeah. Now, documents that talk about similar things, they belong to the same category or a subcategory. Yeah. Um, that is what concentric semantic intelligence does. We use deep learning uh, specifically in the last few years, in fact, last couple of years, uh, there have been new models called attention networks or transformers. Got they it. have completely changed the game. And what they do is they allow you to build what's called a language model. So we built these models that understands English. So it, you can feed it a set of words, a sentence, a, a paragraph, or an entire document. And the model knows what it's talking about and then spits out a bunch of numbers, sure. vectors. These are just numerical representations of what the meaning is. Now, you see where I'm going with this, right? I because do, yeah. So, so what you're basically uh, telling me is that I can use this deep learning capability and represent the meaning of a document as a set of just num numerical uh, information. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? 
Absolutely. And that is the key. That's the, the key. That's the core that powers all the different features. And Got in it. this particular case, we are talking about categorization. The way it does is for a given document, you know, you've got this vector or feature vector or numeric uh, set of numbers. Now I can think about what are uh, documents that are similar to this one. Right. So in this mathematical space, I can look at this set of numbers. I can look at the numbers produced by this deep neural network for all the other documents. I can see which ones are close to this one. Sure. The set of numbers that are close to this one, I can automatically say, I can automate that process of saying, oh, all these belong together. Yeah. And, and that, that should be plus. one category. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we group similar documents together. And the other thing we have done is out of the box, the product comes with a lot of these category models, category right. and subcategory models. We have a hundred plus, but we are coming out with new constantly uh, every week. Right. And uh, what this is, a given group of documents, I can look at the feature vectors and we have already built models that compares them and says, oh, these must be tax documents. Uh, or these must be HR salary information and so yeah. on and so forth. You know, Matthew, it also occurs to me that if you're able to represent the meaning of a document in a numerical way, like you've just described, that has some pretty interesting implications, pretty positive implications for both security and the expertise of the person who is in the past anyway, been charged with writing the rules or developing ways to identify these documents. Absolutely. So writing, uh, writing rules is incredibly hard, right? There, there are certain problems where uh, you can write rules and you can automate the process, but there are certain problems where it's just impossible to write these kind of rules. It's impossible yeah. to elicit how to do this. And a lot of times the, the, the security folks, right, are the front lines yeah. who have this incredibly important responsibility to secure all your business critical yeah. assets. They don't even have the business context. Or the access. Or the, un if it's or the access, yeah. right? Exactly. They, they may not even be able to view what the document contains. And yet they have the responsibility and the accountability to secure them appropriately. It's an impossible task. Yeah. And we are automating that task for them. A classic no in situation, it sounds like. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So when we think about the way forward for Concentric and how we're going to continually uh, improve what we're doing, can you tell me a bit about the team's commitment to improvement at what, maybe at an even more basic level, what does improvement mean in this context? Absolutely. So uh, improvement or learning, yep. learning is, is part of the term machine learning. Sure. Yeah. So any true AI company, uh, in fact, I would go so far as to claim that you're not doing AI if your models are not continually improved. Of course. That's, yeah. that's a key requirement, uh, which is what uh, is happening in our case. I'll give you a quick example. Early on in the alpha, we had uh, we had a smaller set of models. We had a model for tax documents, individual tax documents. And uh, what we observed uh, in POCs were we were flagging a lot of W-2s as we should. Yep, which is a tax document, yeah. Which is a tax document, but we realized it's, a, it's important enough to deserve its own model. So we built a separate model just for W-2s based right. on uh, what we had flagged. Yeah. And this is a key point. In AI, it's a virtue cycle. We release a model, deploy it, and we see all the things it flags, and that feeds into making the model better. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's the commitment we have. We are constantly releasing models. Uh, the models are getting better every day uh, among our customers and in, in our POCs. That's that's just part of the feature set of the product. Yeah. And we also have functionalities where if it's a new vertical that we don't have a model for, we don't know what it is, but we'll group them together and the client can create 
model specific to that environment by just oh, so, saying so, what it is. Right. So you can group uh, items even if you don't necessarily know why they're being grouped. Is essentially is, is kind of what I'm hearing here. Yeah. Exactly. Let's say we go to some new vertical, uh, say oil and gas. I don't know. I just picked one, and there are some very specific. Uh, seismological documents that we don't have a model for. We still group them together. Right, right. Uh, just don't know how be to, sure to the client. To exactly. Yeah. You don't know what to call them. All the client has to do is they, they look at it, they know what it is, they can they can tag it, and from that point onwards, that's a model in that environment. And uh, it will flag all those similar documents. Right, okay. Well, I don't know about uh, you because uh, I'm the guy asking all the questions today, I guess, but I've learned a ton and I'm, I'm really grateful, Madhu, as always, every time I talk with you, I learn something new. I uh, really appreciate your time today and uh, I look forward to doing a couple more of these. I think they're really interesting. So thanks. Attila. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll be uh, happy to share uh, anytime. Yeah. And stay safe out there in Austin. Absolutely. You as well. Thank thanks. you, Scott.